If you've watched a few Hollywood horror movies, you've seen how some people are just followed by bad luck. Lots of trouble starts with a divorce, adoption, or other difficult life event. This is especially true for the kid in tonight's scary story. I was adopted. I never knew my real mother. I loved my adopted family, though. They were so kind to me. I ate well. I lived in a comfortable house. And I got to stay up pretty late. My adopted mom was named Janice. She was a very kind woman. And if I had to guess, I'd say she's the one that recommended my adoption in the first place. Sometimes I would lay my head against her in front of the TV, and she would tickle my back with her nails. She's one of those Hollywood mothers. Too good to be true. Then, there's my adopted dad, Richard. I always felt like he never really liked me, so I began to try to do things to make him happy. He was neutral to me at best. It was clear he would never love me as much as his own child. That's understandable, so I didn't really press the matter. Dad wasn't all bad, though. He was very consistent, maybe to a fault. He was stern, and had an unwavering commitment to doing things properly. He also wasn't afraid to pop his children when they did something wrong. I found that out before I could use the restroom properly. He didn't hesitate to spank me. I'm in line. And that's because of his methods, and at least he always knew where you stood with him. Lastly is my adopted sister, Emily. She was slightly older than me, but in my heart, she was my little sister. We got along better than any siblings could possibly get along. We would always stay up late together and just talk. Well, she did most of the talking. I mostly just listened, because I loved her. I was just so glad to have someone there. It was a great setup that we had. We were short on bedrooms, so, because I didn't want to sleep in the living room by myself when I was so small, I had a mattress set up for me next to her bed on the floor. The apartment wasn't very big. I'd probably have to move to the living room soon, but some of the best nights of my life have been spent on the mattress in this room. Everything changed on a horrible Wednesday night. I was at home taking a nap when Emily opened the front door and woke me up. It was summer. School was out. I was never any good at keeping track of what day it was, but Wednesdays were easy. Emily would go to church youth group on Wednesdays, and I would take a long nap on her bed. It was better than the mattress I slept on, so it was something I looked forward to. Anyway, she walked in the front door and hugged me, and then was followed in by Dad and Mom. Mom teasingly asked if I had a good nap as she ruffled my hair. Mm. I just pulled my head away and grunted back in a playful manner. Don't you grunt at your mother like that, said my father gruffly. I was clearly joking, I growled under my breath. He must not have heard me because I didn't feel him smack me. Emily then proceeded to her room and I followed. She started telling me all about youth group. You know, typical teenage girl stuff. After hearing all about youth group, she suggested we watch some TV. Before she even finished the sentence, I took off for the living room and jokingly stretched out on the sofa, taking up the entire thing. She rolled her eyes at my little brother like a maturity and scooted me over and sat down. We watched TV together until the sun went down. Emily was the kind of girl that, instead of watching cartoons or soap operas, would rather watch Discovery and National Geographic. I liked those too. Actually, they were the only channels that could hold my attention. This might be another reason why we got along so well. It got late, and Mom walked up behind the sofa, telling Emily it was past her bedtime and she had to go to bed. Then she turned to me and said, You too! Emily turned off the TV and grudgingly stood up and started down the hallway. 
As I followed her, I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. We went into her room, and Emily turned off the light. Just as she did, I caught a flash of movement out of the corner of my eye. It was out of the window. But as soon as I turned to see what it was, it was gone. I didn't want to scare Emily. And I did wake up from a nice long nap only a few hours ago. So I decided I would remain alert for a while. I laid there, in the darkness, with nothing but a thin ray of light from the street lamp outside to illuminate the room. It wasn't much. Time and time again, I could have sworn that I could hear sounds just outside the window. A twig break, leaves crunching, clothes jostling. And all the while I could smell a faint stench of body odor. Or garbage. Or some terrible mix of the two. Eventually the sounds outside subsided. And the smell left my nose. I began to feel at ease. My eyelids closed. Not long after that I heard a very loud crash on the other side of the house. I was up in an instant. There's someone in the house! I barked with extreme adrenaline coursing through me. Wake up! I shrilly pleaded with Emily. She did, and as soon as I saw her sit up, I ran to my parents' room. When I got there, I'm pretty sure my dad was already dead. He was stabbed. The blood was soaked into the bedding. I pushed the door open a little more, and that's when I saw him. He was just standing there, in front of my parents' bathroom. He was very large and rugged. He turned around and saw me, and that's when I saw him accurately for the first time. I won't forget it. His eyes were opened wide. He was covered in a horrible mixture of sweat and my father's blood. His clothes were filthy. Just then I noticed the same horrid smell from earlier, but this time it was overwhelming. He saw me. He saw me and grinned with a set of crooked yellow teeth. That smile threw me off. I thought that I was going to die, but then he turned back to the bathroom door, completely unperturbed by my presence. I was terrified and didn't know what to do. I just yelled and cried. I watched as he forced a door open that was my mom's only protection. I watched as he pulled out a knife and watched as he killed my mother. I was completely paralyzed with fear. I couldn't move, but I could feel like electricity was running through my body. I was shivering. Then I heard something, the last thing I wanted to hear. It was Emily's scream coming from behind me. The large monstrosity looked up from my mother and stared at my little sister. I was distraught. He stood up and quickly started towards us. My sister turned and ran. I couldn't move. I wish I could say I was being brave, that I intended to stop or fight this monster. But there was nothing noble about this act. I still couldn't move, and I was at a complete loss when he bypassed me and went straight after her. Why was she still in the house? She should have run. He got a hold of her and started pulling on her. That's when something inside of me snapped. I was filled with desperation, anger, hate. I ran to them while making all the noise I could, hoping, praying that somebody would hear and get help. As he passed me, I backed against the wall and whimpered with terror. Why? He didn't respond except by putting his free hand on my head while Emily screamed in his other hand. He said, Good boy. He gave another crooked grin and a wink, and let out a very unnatural laugh. I followed him to the door, where he dragged my helpless sister after him. He opened it, pulled her out, and slammed it shut behind them. I'm now sitting in the house with my dead adopted parents, shivering and whimpering, and he's out there with her, and I can't do anything about it. I would if I could, but I can't. 
I would chase after them in a heartbeat. But I can't. I'm sitting here at the front door and look down at my paws. If only I could open doors. I was at home taking a nap when Emily opened the front door and woke me up. It was summer. School was out. I was never any good at keeping track of what day it was, but Wednesdays were easy. Wow! I hope I wasn't the only one that thought that story was... Possum? <laughs> Do you know what else is possum? I mean awesome? This week's top commenter! I got so many awesome comments this week that I had a difficult time deciding. So I went with this one because it was a first for the channel. This week, Juan Melendez asked me to say... The pizza, He-Man, eat it all! <laughs> Thanks for the comment, Juan, and for keeping it creepy with me here on Super Horror Show. When the criminal appeared that night, our little pup was ready. He single-handedly, or single-pawedly, took down the criminal. The family and local law enforcement were both so happy with him. But the criminal complained. He said the dog was too... 